Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Since the end of the 1960 decade, uh, that Dr. Fontaine and his colleague uh, introduced the procedure of Fontaine procedure for the mainly hypoplastic left, uh, left heart syndrome. Uh, it has been uh, more than 50 years past. At the beginning, uh, they noticed that there is not effect in this procedure when we bypass the uh, right uh, heart from the circulation and pulmonary circulation it doesn't affect too much on the cardiovascular system but after 50 years uh, collection of data it came that uh, the right uh, heart is import as important as a left ventricle here you can see those complications for the after procedure patient uh, with uh, long follow-up you can see a lot of the complication we can see uh, post-procedure because beside of the other uh, parameters involved with this but the main is that uh, we bypass um, is the consequence of bypass of the right ventricle in pulmonary circulation not only that one, uh, the data and research show that the right ventricle has a unique structure and function. Mechanical and biochemical is completely unique and a little in many aspects different from the left side. And even age and gender, the right ventricular function will be a little uh, different. For example, in the f fetus life and uh, first years of the life because of the uh, pressure on the pulmonary, right uh, ventricular wall thickness is almost the same as the left ventricle. But after that, little by little, the wall thickness decreases to the almost 3 to 5 millimeter. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, uh, important stuff we are going to uh, contact, but since this is a very uh, wide spectrum uh, subject, I am going just uh, shortly go over them. First, uh, let's go and look at the anatomy and physiology of the uh, right ventricle. Right ventricle volume is 10 to 15 percent larger of, uh, larger of the left ventricle volume, and not only that, the the shape of the left ventricle that is ellipsoidal or cone shape and concentric right ventricle is a crescent shape chamber that has a three part one inlet uh, that is included the tricuspid valve those corda tendini and uh, popularly muscle another apex and the finally uh, conus arteriosus or infundibulum here or in the more practical we called it RVOT and this uh, RVOT or uh, infundibulum is separated by a supracrista uh, supraventricular crest here you can see uh, from the entrance and this view you can see this is a supracrista, uh, supraventricular crest, crest or crista supraventricularis that separate from the uh, entrance of the left vent right ventricle. Beside of that, the uh, infundibulum is a cone shape that is a structure is muscular, tubular muscular, opposite of the LVOT that is a continuous of the uh, orthomitral uh, structure and is membranous. The size of the cone or infundibulum, conus or infundibulum, is uh, usually at the early stage and mid stage of the over volume overload is independent of the right the other side of other part of the right ventricle and about 20 percent of the end diastolic volume of the right ventricle belong to the uh, infundibulum but later 
uh, it can affect and as you know uh, with the on the plaques and PZAX we measure proximal of the RVOT at this level is exactly at uh, that uh, part in fundibulum that we measure it but you have to remember that is uh, only on the later stage or advanced stage of volume overload this part enlarged too as I mentioned, there are differences in the mechanical and structural function, uh, structure of the right ventricle compared to the left ventricle. Right ventricle cardiomyocyte is generally 15% smaller than the uh, left ventricle cardiomyocyte. And uh, interesting, there are uh, more collagen, about 30% in the right ventricle uh, <coughs> fiber compared to the left ventricle. Uh, left ventricle, as you know, we have three layers of the uh, fiber of the muscle uh, in uh, uh, subepicardial, the circumferential, middle, and subendocardial. In right ventricle, we have two layers of arranged, arranged of the uh, myocardial uh, cell. Uh, one of them uh, external or subendocardial, that is circumferential. And is about include about 20% of the uh, wall thickness of the right ventricle, and rest of it about 75% uh, belong to the subendocardial layer that is longitudinal. And the major about 70% uh, of the ejection fraction are um, uh, related uh, to the this long and subendocardial longitudinal layer. Later, we talk about that those stuff in different uh, pathology situation, each of them play how much role and what those findings we can see, especially in echo. Another uh, important finding and uh, differences or finding is uh, that the interventricular septum that is common between two ventricles uh, play major roles in ejection fraction of the right ventricle. It's something about between 20 to 40 percent. In those uh, cases that we have myocardial infarction on the septum, we can see effect in both right and left ventricle drop in of the uh, ejection fraction in both sides. Later we talk about that. Uh, uh, one important biochemical aspect of the right ventricle and left ventricle is that they are uh, the, they have different uh, roles in uh, both sides. For example, if if we use uh, alpha adrenergic uh, stimulator in the right side, uh, it causes decreased contractility of the uh, myocardial cells, but in the left side is decreasing and even in a different age and the gender those biochemical is are a little differences that they are starting to uh, searching and looking in those biochemical aspect in different age and a different gender little by little we will have more uh, data and information here are the most important differences between the two left and right ventricles. As uh, you can see, uh, it has two layer, left ventricle, three layer. Uh, the right ventricle is more sensitive to the pressure overload based on the Laplace uh, law. Uh, and the opposite of that, left ventricle are, uh, is more sensitive to the volume overload. In another word, those uh, situations that we have uh, volume overload, right ventricle can accommodate and uh, uh, with that situation, but uh, left ventricle are more sensitive in those situations and vice versa. Or uh, the blood perfusion in the right ventricle, as we know, is in uh, during both the diastole and systole uh, on the coronary artery, right coronary artery, but on the left side is major happen during diastole or we have a lot of differences uh, between the gene expression and protein expression uh, 
uh, in the left side and uh, right side. That is beyond this lecture. If you are interested, there are uh, many lectures that you can find and study. Moderator band or septomarginal trabecula can be detected over 90 to 95 percent of the uh, people. But it's dependent on the race. In some race is uh, more common, in some race is a little. But generally, general population around the world is around 90 percent. We can uh, see moderator band means there is a moderator band. In 10 percent, less than 10 percent of the people, they don't have moderator band. The size of the moderator band. Uh, will be variant, but average the length is 13 millimeter and the thickness is about 5 millimeter. More accurate average is 4.6 millimeter. The shape of the moderator band uh, is will be different and can be uh, categorized in two. Uh, I'm sorry, three group. One of them are cylindric, that is not too much common. Another is long and thin, that is the most common type. And the last one is uh, flat and uh, broad or with uh, shape. The location of the moderator band in majority of the cases, over 60% is at uh, origin at the free wall, at the middle of the free wall, and go almost close to the mid of the septum. Uh, the other uh, Location is at the one third of the apical and sometimes close to the apical, and uh, less than one third, uh, even less than that, is close to the uh, tricuspid valve on the free wall. Uh, moderator bands never attach to the, uh, doesn't have any attachment to the tricuspid. The orientation of the uh, moderator band can be different average between 60 there is a almost 60 to 90 degree to this compared to the septum and free wall but it can be completely different if for example in those group that is close to the apical it can be completely almost parallel to the septum like this case as you can see uh, the moderator band close to the apex and attached to the septum so this is almost parallel. It looks like separation in the septum. And be aware of that uh, different orientation of the moderator band. On the short axis, you can see, especially at the level of the papillary muscle or mitral valve opening, you can see on uh, the right ventricle. Here you can see on apical tree, uh, or plaques, you can see, appreciate the moderator band easily. The uh, origin, uh, origin of the moderator band is very specific and unique, and in most cases, over 90%, the moderator band attached to the base of the anterior papillary muscle. Most of the cases, before it is attached, it is uh, divided to two or three branches and uh, surround the base of the uh, anterior papillary muscle. In less than 10 percent, maybe it goes uh, directly without attachment to the anterior papillary muscle attached to the anterior wall. The, this pattern of the connection is very important and play a major role to helping anterior papillary muscle from the uh, any uh, functioning uh, from uh, make it correct function of the tricuspid if it moderator band has this function it, we can expect to see some degree of the tricuspid regurgitation uh, the moderator band function has a lot to, uh, to they check it, but still we are at the beginning of evaluation of that. One of the most important function or role of the moderator band is playing in the conductive, uh, conductivity system of the right side of the heart. There is a branches come from right, right atrioventricular branches goes to the moderator band and uh, depolarized close to the apex of right ventricular and free wall. And this pattern of the depolarization help 
that uh, those all hemodynamic function of the right ventricular uh, to help that the blood goes the laminar way to the RVOT. And uh, the histological uh, structure of the moderator band has been uh, studied and showed there are different histology on the moderator band that is beyond this uh, lecture i'm not going to talk about that but it uh, this moderator band is a very important and common source of the uh, ventricular tachycardia or vtac and uh, even thought they have some uh, ekg or ecg features but the best uh, technique for detecting the source of that VTAC that belong to the moderator band is electric core mapping in uh, EP. Uh, another function of the moderator band is preventing of the uh, expanding right ventricle, suddenly expanding the right ventricle in those situations that we have acute uh, volume overload. And it helped a lot. And another function is that there is a branches uh, that goes through the moderator band. This moderator band branches, uh, the coronary artery, connect the left uh, coronary uh, uh, artery circulation to the right coronary circulation. And in those cases, ischemic situation, this uh, anastomos and uh, connection between the left and right can help to prevent and decrease the ex 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 extensive and amount of the ischemia. Here uh, in, in the left side of the ventricle, sometimes we see a, a moderator band that most of the cases is a corda tendine. You can see hyper echo line transverse usually close to the apex in some cases this uh, uh, band moderator band that we called it pseudo moderator band can have some myocardial and muscle fiber like these cases you can see a little tick and if you zoom on it you can see has uh, some myocardial and contractility that uh, uh, still we don't know the function of uh, this uh, pseudo moderator band on the left side and it needs more study even out they uh, related some uh, pathology and some uh, supportive function for this pseudo moderator band but still we don't have very clear and completely information about the role of this uh, pseudo uh, moderator band on the left side I forgot to uh, mention that uh, when we scan moderator band, if uh, we don't uh, cut our sound beam doesn't pass through completely length of the moderator band, it can uh, imp mimic uh, some uh, intraventricular mass or pathology or even sometime uh, looks like that vegetation. Just in those cases, you are not sure uh, what is that? Just with different view and different twisting, fanning, and angling, try to open up all the moderator band. In that case, you show that is not pathology, it is normal moderator band. In this lecture has been finished. In the next two lectures, I am going to talk about all those study uh, we uh, use for evaluation of the right ventricular function in detail more than even taught in other lecture I explain each of them in different but in the, this uh, lecture second part I'm going to completely put everything together and how we use it and interpret it, all of them and the third uh, lecture third part I'm going to talk all those pathology that involved uh, right ventricular dysfunction and how we evaluated and go to detail and some kind of the small uh, short review for treatment. Up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.